Eternal Lords is an expansion pack in the grand tradition of the form, by which I mean it's bloody massive. Not only do you get two brand new races, the Frostlings, who are a bit like Game of Thrones White Walkers, and the Tigrans, Egyptian cat people, but you also get to indulge your evil side with a whole new class, the Necromancer. Quantity doesn't always mean quality of course, but thankfully in this case the new additions aren't simply nice little bonuses. They provide radically new ways to approach Triumph's already excellent fantasy empire builder. So let's start with the brand new Necromancer class. Previously in Age of Wonders 3, morale has been a key mechanic to consider. Unhappy populations would become liabilities in the field, where a simple, well-placed despair or fear spell could cause them to cower in terror, making them pitifully easily targets for your troops. The Necromancer solves this problem by killing everybody. His population is made up of undead ghouls rather than living troops, and therefore he neatly sidesteps the need to worry about keeping them happy. That's a pretty powerful ability, so as you might imagine, it doesn't come without a price. Ghoul units don't regenerate hit points over time, so you have to sprinkle reanimator units throughout your forces to keep them battle ready. Likewise, you'll never benefit from the hefty bonuses that having a happy population can give you. There are other cool thematic differences, your ghoul's population doesn't grow through traditional means and instead must be raised by either converting enemy populations via zombie plague spells or building certain structures like embalming guilds in your cities. More than anything now your population becomes a resource like crystals and gold which is incredibly fitting and deliciously evil. It's not just mechanical differences, necromancers also have access to a new range of spells and units and some very nasty battlefield abilities. One trick I used more than once was resurrecting a dead unit as a trash unit called a cadaver. We were useless in combat but great for providing flanking attacks for my heavier melee units. Banshees, another new unit, cause despair in a wide radius which slots in beautifully with some of your other units who do extra damage against enemies with low morale. There's all sorts of neat combos like this to experiment with, which makes playing a necromancer hero heaps of fun both on the battlefield and off. The two new races are also a welcome addition, although neither changes the game quite as dramatically as the new class. Frostlings contain some great heavy hitter units like yetis and mammoth mounts, but also make use of a new chilling status effect to make enemies vulnerable to being frozen. Tigrans, meanwhile, tend to be lighter and faster with high damage but lower hit points. Age of Wonders neat racial and class unit mixing makes for some interesting combinations and from a purely visual standpoint the unit design and aesthetics of each race and a welcome splash of colour to the game's fantasy universe. Unique structures and units have also been liberally sprinkled across each map, some of which can be captured to provide specific bonuses to your empire, as a frostling necromancer conquering a lich's tomb could unlock a new structure which gives a fear effect to all my troops while new aquatic domains can see you battle various sea creatures including some surprisingly effective baby krakens. There's a huge amount to discover and anyone who has that heroes of might and magic itch to explore absolutely every hidden nook on the map will be more than satisfied. If you're bored of having to win the game by obliterating absolutely everyone who opposes you, the new unifier victory type will give you a more peaceful option. Every action you perform in the game will now earn you positive or negative reactions from the various races in the world. Earn a particular race's trust, say by liberating their independent city from an evil warlord, and you'll unlock bonuses to either your economy or your military. Reach a high enough rapport with a particular race and you can start building the Unifier Beacons, wonders signifying your sandal wearing benevolence that win you the game upon completion. This meshes well with some new alignment specialisations such as the good aligned Keeper of the Peace which are a fine choice for stirring up your enemy's populace. Again there's lots of synergy here between various classes and races, enough that your options for achieving a peaceful victory are very nearly as varied as those for winning through conquest. It's a shame that the main campaign doesn't quite hold up to the same high standard as everything else in Eternal Lords. Though it does a decent job of introducing the new changes, the tale of a bitter frostling lord dipping his chilly fingers in necromancy never really amounts to anything more than a brief distraction. If you've played any of the previous campaigns in the game, there's nothing really new to see here. 
It seems churlish to complain about that too much considering that skirmish mode and multiplayer has always been the best way to enjoy Age of Wonders 3, but it would have been nice to see Triumph do justice to all the cool new ideas they've introduced. That's a fairly minor criticism though. Like all good expansions, Eternal Lords doesn't just throw in a bunch of new content at random. It carefully reconsiders the mechanics of the core game and offers interesting new ways to approach familiar problems. The big draw here is the inventive necromancer class which is just heaps of fun to play, but both the two new races and the range of smaller changes like the new options for a peaceful victory are smart additions that will make Age of Wonders 3 feel fresh again to even the most jaded player. Take note developers, this is how you do a good expansion pack. Age of Wonders 3 Eternal Lords gets a very impressive 9 out of 10.